counter-narrative news bringing you daily news today on Monday 27th of February 2023. Going to Italy, just desperately tragic news where 59 people, including a newborn baby and small children, have lost their lives in a migrant boat crashing on the rocky coast in South Italy in Calabria. 81 people survived, 20 have been taken to hospital. This is a migrant route and a boat on the Mediterranean Sea that started in Turkey and Italy was its destination. People on the boat comprise people from Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq and Pakistan. The far-right Prime Minister of Italy who came to power in October last year in 2022, Maloney, has made it much more difficult for rescuers to retrieve people from the sea. She has imposed a fine of 50,000 euros for anyone who is conducting search and rescue missions and does not come to the port that they requested immediately because the longer the rescuers are at sea, the more they can attempt and often successfully recoup people on other boats or people in distress on the seas. The International Migrant Organization has reported that more than 20,000 people have lost their lives or have gone missing in the Mediterranean Sea on these migrant routes since 2014. The black and brown bodies of our people are turning up on shores throughout South Europe and this has been going on for decades but it suddenly spiked up after the NATO operation to destroy the socialist state of Libya which then was replaced by the proxy death squads of NATO who conducted that operation on the ground in, into farcically the so-called Libyan Coast Guard. The same kind of Libyan Coast Guards who were also involved in the brutal torture and trafficking and buying and selling of human beings through the Libyan land route. Going to Palestine, two people from illegal settlements in the West Bank had been killed by Palestinians, reportedly by means of Palestinian gunfire. This follows shortly after the white supremacist colonial regime of Tel Aviv conducted a raid on Nablus, which where the two set nearby which where the two settlers were killed the raid on Nablus itself by Israel resulted in the massacre of some 10 people there to remind to remind uh, viewers and listeners these settlements on the west bank of Palestine are illegal under international law and the settlements are a base for further well it's itself a, a imposition of colonial annexation on Palestinian land by means of violence to impose the settlement and then further violence by the settlers and being backed by the Israeli military establishment. Talks are underway between the Palestinian Authority and Israeli administration in Aqaba in Jordan because frankly both parties are nervous that this situation will continue to escalate. And the Palestinian struggle itself really focuses the people of the region and their wider community across the globe as to the actual obstacles and challenges to the peace and unity and people-centered progress of the region, which is Western domination still of the region and its primary allies in places like Tel Aviv and also the Gulf monarchies. So it's really important in the interests of the Israeli and their Western backers to try and, quote unquote, to keep a lid on the Palestinians, but they will never be shut down. Going over to Peru, although President Boluarte has already expelled the um, uh, uh, Mexican ambassador back in December, she has reiterated the, uh, her her position of expelling the Mexican uh, ambassador after Mexican President Obrador says last Friday that the former leftist Peruvian President Castillo was ousted illegally and unjustly. Castillo was ousted on the same day the much more closely aligned to Western, Western uh, state interests, Baluarte, became president. This triggered a mass uprising which is still continuing amongst the poor in Peru in which they have faced 
a racist, violent backlash, killing over 60 people there. But linking this with the migration, the politics of migration, which arguably is one of the most central issues politically of our times, unfortunately, Mexican President Obrador is also colluding and collaborating with his northern neighbors in Washington in a real uh, stringent and harsh and oppressive uh, infrastructure of oppressing people coming on that migrant route through Central America into Mexico and to the US-Mexican border. So there's a lot of deep contradictions at play here, despite the fact that President Obrador of Mexico is very close to the radical leftist movements and leaderships in the region. Uh, he, he has uh, given exile to former Peruvian pe President Castillo's wife and two children uh, in Mexico as an example of that. Finally, going to Indonesia and West Papua, in early February, the Free, Papuan, uh, the Free West Papuan Movement and their armed wing, the National Liberation Army of West Papua, took hostage a pilot called Philip Mertens from New Zealand when he was flying his small plane into a generally isolated airstrip in the West Papuan region, which Indonesia claims as its own. One of the most wanted leaders of the West Papuan resistance movement, Enias Kogoya, has been pictured in the plane that was captured, then it was satellite subsequently, and also with Philip Mertens, the New Zealand captain. He is demanding the independence of all provinces of West Papua. West Papua itself was a former, basically, colony of the Netherlands, and in a highly controversial uh, vote in 1969 in which only 1,000 people of West Papua took place, that West Papua was colonized itself by Indonesia, which maintains a massive military presence and strategy in communities in West Papua, often displacing tens of thousands of people at a time around clashes with the West Papuan Freedom Forces. But the West Papuan people seem to be very determined to continue their resistance. They are resisting the, 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 the way in which Indonesia is facilitating the neo-colonial capitalist looting of the resources, the rich resources, one should say, of the West Papuan provinces. And it also pertains in relation to the demands of the free West Papuan movement to demand the end of the military collaboration by New Zealand and Australia on the one hand, with its occupiers in the Indonesian state. And that itself opens up the question that is Australia going to maintain its neo-colonial European posture vis-a-vis -vis its Asian neighbours in which, in, which in, in which region it sits in? Or, or are Australians and also eventually and partly some of their political leadership going to decide that they actually have to be in a state of harmony and naturalization with their neighbors and to counteract this neo-colonial racist relationship they have in the region. That was uh, Counter Narrative News bringing daily news today. Many thanks to our subscribers. We are approaching up 200 subscribers in our first two months, which is really great support to be seen. Please do continue to encourage your friends and your contacts and your networks to continue to subscribe to us to uh, follow us on Twitter at counter underscore CNN and please do send us comments, criticisms, feedbacks. Please do like this video and share. We wish you a fantastic day.